In the tent behind me, a whole new world has just been created. One that's full of insects, flying, fluttering, bouncing and playing. But this world wasn't created overnight. Two weeks earlier, all of this was just being constructed. involved with the setup? Well, um, as you saw, what you, what you did see was the walls going up, the side poles, but we pre-placed all the masts. What you probably were imagining was more of a, a rope hauling, but we actually do that all hydraulically now. So uh, while we still maintain a lot of circus traditions, uh, we've advanced it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you need to. Yeah. Now, this tent would need to, it travels all over the world, so it would need to withstand, you know, the heat of Australia, snow, yeah, everything. Uh, we can, uh, we even were in a 6.7 magnitude um, earthquake in Mexico City. So we're good. We've pretty much gone through everything from, uh, as you said, snow, um, ice, flooding, wow, earthquakes. Yeah. I even said to my guys, if we had a, a flock of locusts yet, and they said, yeah, Houston, <laughs> locusts. The show yeah. must go on. Yeah. <laughs> they call this place the Village on Wheels. And as we're about to find out, this big top doesn't just house the stage. There's the kitchen, very important, which serves up over 200 meals a week for the OVO crew members, a school for any children of the crew and performers, and the artistic tent, which is home to wardrobe, dressing rooms, a physiotherapy room, and a training area for the performers. Let the magic begin. Welcome to the world that is OVO. Being reborn as a human-sized insect is a dream come true for the performers that are warming up behind me. Marion, the show does go all around the world. It's in foreign countries and there's no actual dialogue. So how is the story told? The story is told by mu movement only and we do have a dialogue, but it's insect language. Oh, so really for, easy to understand. Yeah, so for <laughs> example, we have three main characters, a ladybug, a fly, and a master flippo who directs all the community of insects, and he's a beetle. So when you ask, for example, a question to the ladybug, like, are you happy today, ladybug? She'll go, bzzz, brrr, bzzz. So that's their language, and it's very understandable, really. If yeah. you watch their body language, their sound, you'll understand what happens. And of course, there's the costumes and the makeup that yes. really just bring everything Absolutely, to life. Absolutely, yes. So this is a huge show. How does it all begin? We were asked, or Deborah Kolker, who created the show, was asked by Guy La Liberté, who is the founder of our company, in 2006 already, and we are 2012 now. Um, we would like to do a show about insects and we would like for you to create it. So she thought that was very exciting because if you look at the world of insects, there's so many different yeah. kinds, they're so colorful. Take a cricket who can jump three times its own height, then look at a Cirque du Soleil performer, a trampolinist for example, he can jump three times its of own course. height as well. Yeah. So transfer that into becoming a character of a cricket and it's perfect. Makes perfect sense. Yes, so that was really exciting to work with so as a concept. six years ago, that's where it all began and then somebody starts and then a, a year after that Deborah Kolker came to Montreal and Chantal Tremblay who was our director of creation gathered together a group of people a set designer composers yeah. a, a, a sound designer costume designer um, all came together to sit around the table and go okay how can we create a show that's two hours long in which we tell the story of the ladybug who falls in love with the fly, uh, in which we present to the audience all these different lives, all these different families of insects. We also try to create a little bit of awareness to the children, but also to the older people yep. of not just squishing an insect when you see it, but maybe first look at it and see how beautiful yeah. it is. And then don't squish it either <laughs> after that, but just realize we need those insects, otherwise we would not have this beautiful planet Earth. Absolutely. So that's part of it too. Coming up, we take a look behind the scenes at some of the finer details of the show and meet the people that bring together a show like this. What better way?
way to get a different perspective on life than by soaring through the air. Walking upside down. Or just kicking back and juggling some fruit. We are behind the scenes of Ovo. So far, we've seen how this village on wheels came to be, and now it's time to head behind the scenes and find out what it's like to be a part of a special circus family. There is a pretty cool buzz in the air, Olivia. Is it always like this? We've got warm-ups, costumes being fixed, people getting ready over there, getting makeup and stuff on. Is it always such a buzz? It is a day-to-day -day life, yeah. It's like that every day. Uh, we have technicians, we have artists, we have people working, you know, in different departments and uh, from different places around the world. It's, it's great. It's a, it's a family. Uh, it's definitely a unique experience uh, to be part of Cirque. When it comes to a successful world touring show, every aspect of the event is important, from the stage design to the lighting to the music and to the costumes. Olivia, all of these costumes are so amazing. I feel like I'm in a dress-up shop. This is obviously a very important part of the show to tell the story. Absolutely, and especially in Ovo because the show is very, very colourful. Uh, we have uh, crickets, we have uh, ants, we have fleas, we have scarabs. So it's uh, it's definitely a very, very important part of the show. Covering uh, all insects, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. We, we have about 15 different costumes uh, for the whole cast, so it's definitely a very important part of, of, of Ovo. And where are they made? They're created in Montreal. It takes about uh, 80 to 100 hours to create one costume like this one. So during the creation process in Montreal, uh, every artist will be uh, scanned. They will create a body scan of uh, the artist. So they create one costume specially for one artist. So yeah, they, are, they fit only one person. Hand dyed, hand painted. So it's it's a lot of work. Oh goodness. Yeah. One costume like this one will work between eight to ten thousand dollars. I'm not gonna touch them. <laughs> and of course, the space where the performance comes to life is vital. Well, they're still doing some setup behind us, and I think the stage looks pretty incredible. How do you come up with a design like that? Well, usually the design of the stage will come in the second year of the creation process. Okay. Once we have the storyline and what the show will be about, the creators will design a stage that will represent the character of the show. Now we've got some setup going for the rehearsals behind us. Is there always a rehearsal before the show? Yeah, we have rehearsals every day, except when we have two shows a day. Uh, sometimes we'll have like quick warm-ups, but usually when we have one show a day, we'll have rehearsal uh, in the afternoon or in the morning. Right here, we're getting ready to rehearse the flying act, uh, which is the Russian, swear, the Russian swing, the bunking, and the Russian chair. So it's, it's a very amazing act. They must be such incredible athletes to be able to do the rehearsals, get out there and do the show and just still get a hundred, give it 100% every night. Absolutely. They are in a very, very good physical condition. Uh, some of them uh, have been in the Olympics, so they are really, really good. And, uh, you know, um, their food, their training is really, really important. And I guess um, mentally as well, like if you maybe go out on show, on stage one night, make a bit of a mistake, to be able to come back from that. So. They are strong physically and mentally as well. Very soon guys, we are going to get to meet the performers that wear these amazing costumes and bring the whole show to life. We've run away and joined the circus. Okay, well we haven't actually joined, but we have seen what it takes to make a world touring performance. And now it is time for the best part of our behind the scenes look at Ovo, getting to meet the people that bring the show to life. From writers and directors, to set and costume designers, to technicians and the artists, each job as a member of this circus is just as important as the next. Marion, I think your job title being the artistic director sounds very intriguing. What does it involve? Uh, it, first of all, it's a blessing in the sky, really. I, I get to 
play with all the 54 artists and the 12 members of the artistic team who help me manage the artists, but really what we're doing is to look at the show every day, um, take notes and decide, okay, that part can be a bit better, we need to work on this part, we need to rehearse it, or that part is actually great, but what if we change it just a tiny little bit? Because I'm not allowed to change it. It's being created and I need to respect the concept yep. of, of the show. But what my responsibility is, I received the show in 2009 when it was just a little baby, and I was asked, okay, so Marion, you now need to make it grow up and mature yep. and evolve. Of it. So that's what I do and it's wonderful because I get to be very hands-on with the artist every day and at the end of the day watch that gorgeous applause or listen to it yeah. from the 2,500 people who are just all smiling and it's a very rewarding that's, job. That's going to be so rewarding. Yes. While in costume they're all a part of the same insect community. But this circus brings together some of the best performers from all over the world. One, who certainly isn't afraid of heights, is 25-year-old Zafirbek Zadikov from Russia. What is it like performing for Cirque du Soleil? Ah, it's quite fun. It's a good adventure. You travel a lot the world and you see many people. You see like many cities. Ah, it's fun. Yeah. I yeah, I always I like to work in Cirque du Soleil. And, like in this show, it's like world of insects. <laughs> it's fun. Pretty cool. Pretty educational at the same time, I guess. Yeah. Now, um, what is your background? How did you get into this? Uh, my background is like I'm from the circus family. Yeah. So I was when I was a kid, I started to like practice and working, and then I like work in rollerblade act. Yeah. And then I'm like become a little bit strong and like a little big for the rollerblades. And then I'm like decided when I was 15, I want to try like do, do catching stuff to, to be a catcher. And so then I become a catcher. And then when I was like in 2008, I sent the video CD to the Cirque du Soleil like uh, casting. Yeah. And so that's how I get here. Awesome. Which means Zafa is now a part of one of the biggest trapeze acts of all time that has ever been performed in the Grand Chapiteau. How high are you in the air? Uh, actually, the platform is from the stage. I think it's about seven meters. Whoa. And the swing chairs are about a little bit down. But when is the swing chairs are close, we have a cradle bar. It's about nine, nine eighty, nine eighty meters. So you're not scared of heights. No. <laughs> now, when I watch shows like this, my I'm so nervous. Like I feel sick watching the shows. Do you get nervous doing it? Uh, the basically, like you know, every art artist I think get nervous when they like go on stage and do this. Like my father say, he's also artist. The the good, good artist always nervous. Yes, it's a good sign. If you're not nervous, then it's like means something wrong. Like you you. Do when like sometimes I'm not nervous and I feel not comfortable, I think like what happened, huh? And then like this feeling become like, you know, butterflies in your stomach, you go like, oh, that's okay. It's, it's nice. gonna be a good show. Yeah. I don't think any amount of nerve would ever allow me to perform some of these feats. But I'm surely glad that these guys can defy gravity and push the human body to new limits. <laughs> 